Let's stand for prayer. Our God and our Father, we ask you now in Jesus Christ's name that you will sanctify these two sessions with your presence. God, I pray that you will speak, Lord, out of your heart, from your throne in heaven, God. I pray that you will speak to our hearts, Father. You know how you feel about homes, Lord. Share your heart with us this morning. We pray, we plead with you for this, Father, and we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, we're going to begin with more pictures of promise. Too many beautiful, glorious pictures of promise in the Bible to fit into 45-minute sermon. These are spirit-inspired pictures of God's will for you and for your family. When we look into them, we see. As we see, God creates desire in the heart. With that desire in the heart, we begin to move in the direction of that which we see. That is how God uses vision to move his people from where they are to where he wants them to be. With that desire, the heart is opened up to instruction and correction. This is the reason why we are staying so long on the visionary aspect of our home, so that when we get down to the nuts and the bolts where instruction, where correction is given, our hearts will be willing and open to hear and receive deeply What we are being given. Sometimes that can be painful. Vision helps us to bear that pain. Because we see something. And because we see it. And desire it. And we want it. We are willing to bear the pain. Of facing our failures. And thus we will get the gain. Of taking steps forward in our homes. That's the purpose for all the emphasis on vision. Now let's read In Psalm 127, as we look at some more pictures of promise in the Bible. Psalm 127, and starting in verse 3. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. Hallelujah. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. Glory. We want to look this morning to begin with here at carefully prepared arrows. God begins with some lofty statements about our children as we have read here. Again, showing us the value, the precious value that he has placed upon children. And then he follows it with several analogies. And I would just like to make the comparisons here before we go any further. We see in this text a physical war. But we also, with the eyes of our heart, being New Testament Christians, we also see That there is a spiritual war. That spiritual war is more important than any physical war upon this earth. Oh, that God's people would understand that. We also see an enemy in that war. And yea, we have our spiritual enemies also. There is a man in this war as we look at these verses. And according to the scriptures, that man is a spiritual father. And lastly, there are weapons in war. And the weapons in this spiritual war that we're speaking about, those weapons are our children. Don't forget that, brothers and sisters. There is a war. We have an enemy. We are in this war. And those weapons are our children. We must understand life 
in Israel a bit to understand the depths of the meaning of these verses that we have read. In Israel, in Bible days, every able man was expected to go to war. And they prepared for it. Young men, from the time they were boys, prepared for the day when they could keep rank in the armies of Israel. Glory! Boys, they prepared for the day when they could keep rank in the armies of Israel. It was part of their responsibility. In Israel, arrows were a very effective weapon against the enemy. If you could just, you know, put your mind here for a minute, it's one thing to pull out a sword and stand face to face with the enemy. It's another thing to pull out an arrow and put it in a bow and stand back about a hundred feet and shoot. If you can do that, you have a very effective weapon at your hands. Now, in Israel's day, there were no factories where arrows were made. You couldn't go down to the local sporting goods store and buy arrows. Most of the time, the soldiers in Israel, they made their own arrows. Every young man was an expert in their weapons of war. Arrows were a big issue. These arrows needed to be straight. If an arrow is not straight, it will not go where you want it to go. So it was very important that the arrows would be straight. Those soldiers took great care at making straight, sharp arrows. Imagine how it was. There's a father sitting by the side of his house at a time when there was no war, making arrows. There he has his arrows in his hand. He's got his little knife in his hand. And he's there working on these arrows. Where do you think his mind is at while he's working on these arrows? We all know where that soldier's mind is at while he's there working on that arrow. Holding it up there, eyeing it a bit, seeing it a little crooked right here. Back down he goes again. His mind is on the enemy while he is working on that arrow. There's no question about it. He saw himself standing before the enemies of the God of Israel. And he would shave some off and hold it up to give it his eye. Shave a little more off and hold it up to give it his eye. This is the way he did. All the while thinking of where this arrow might go someday. And all the while planning that when the time comes... When he stands before the enemy and he reaches in to his quiver and pulls out one of those arrows and puts it in the bow and pulls it back. He knows this arrow must hit the mark. Now with these soldiers hitting the mark was no problem. They were expert at it. The problem was not hitting the mark because of their ability. The problem was I must have an arrow that will go straight. Because I know how to make it. I know how to aim it straight. But I must have an arrow that when I put it in that bow, it will go right to the place where I want it to go. This is the illustration that we see right here. It's powerful, isn't it? That arrow must hit the mark. If it doesn't, it's useless. What good is a bunch of arrows in the back, in your quiver, if when you pull them out and you aim over here, it goes over there. No value at all. The practical applications. If we can, just remember the four comparisons. A godly father is a man, a spiritual man. He sees into the eternal. He sees a spiritual war over righteousness and the souls of men. This war has high stakes. He sees an enemy. The enemy is a wicked king. This enemy has a wicked kingdom. And this enemy is fighting against God and against righteousness and against anybody who is standing for God or righteousness. This is a godly father. And lastly, he sees his children. These, my children, they are the weapons that are in his hand which are sent forth To hit a mark in the enemy's camp. That is the illustration. These weapons are spiritual youth. Prepared with care for battles. 
Note that. They are not prepared with care so you can sit them beside your house. They are prepared with care for battle. There's a big difference between those two goals. Joy fills the heart of this godly father as he dreams of the day when he will have his quiver full of these kind of arrows. His heart fills with joy as he dreams of that. And together with his wife, they rise up with their whole heart to raise a quiver full of arrows that will hit the mark. Brothers and sisters, that's what we need to do. We need to rise up with our wives and with all of our heart, prepare a quiver full of children who will hit the mark when God decides to shoot them somewhere. This is no little endeavor, by the way. It takes this husband and wife 40 years to do this. But that's all right. When you shoot one of these arrows, they do all kinds of damage. It's worth a 40-year investment, no doubt about it. They take special care in everything they do. Each one of these, my children, must hit the mark. God has a plan for every one of my children. I don't know what it is. I don't know where God's going to shoot them. But I know that every one of them must be prepared so that when God picks it up and shoots it, it'll hit the mark and do damage to Satan's kingdom and bring glory and honor to God. That's what God has in his heart. Oh, happy is the man that has his quiver full of arrows that will hit the mark when he pulls it out and shoots it. I don't know about you. I don't know where you're at in your own heart, how deep your vision or your dedication or your determination goes. But as for me and my house, we are making arrows. We're shaving them off and holding them up to look them in the eye. And we're shaving them off. And we're holding them up to give them a good eye to see if they're straight. And we're going to shave them off a bit more and hold them up there so that we can look at them with our eye. We are making arrows at our house that will hit the mark, brothers and sisters. With purpose! With determination! With a goal in mind. It takes a lot of time and effort to make arrows like that. But... These arrows must hit the mark. They must hit the mark. The mark is the enemy and his territory. The mark is some place of service in this old world to build God's kingdom. That's the mark. A statement I hear many times, it troubles me. I probably don't hear it as much anymore. They wouldn't say it around me, but I hear it. I hear people say, well, my children will turn out all right. I think my children will turn out all right. They'll make it somehow. It'll be okay. Well, this statement lacks much purpose and vision, if you ask me. I don't want children that just turn out all right. I don't want just children that will fit into a church somewhere and sit on a bench somewhere, and that's where they'll be for the next 20 or 30 years. That's not what I'm aiming at. Bless God, I'd rather see them there than out into the heathen world. But I want more than that for my children. I don't want them to just turn out all right. I want them to be one of those arrows that God can look down at someday and say, there's one, reach out of that, pull it out of that quiver, put it in his bow and shoot it somewhere. My sights are set higher than all right. The fields are white and the laborers are few, brothers and sisters. And the Lord will use every arrow that he can find. You can be sure of it. He'll use everyone that he can find. Everyone that has been prepared 